Good day everyone, it's Caitlin and today we are making a 19 teens corset. Hello and welcome. Working on another one of our World War I projects and this is going to be the corset. So I have here a McCall's pattern. It's probably a little earlier than what I needed it to be, but I already had the pattern. So I was like, you know what? We'll go ahead and make it up. And I'm using a cotton canvas, cotton quill, drill, something of that nature. It's a very heavy fabric. I'm just going to do a single layer corset. going and as they cut out we'll sew them together and then I think I'm going to do the boning channels with the seam allowance if I have enough seam allowance to do this to do so I think I should I just find that to be so much easier right, step number one is to sew all the pieces together so, a uh, 5 h inch seam allowance is what the pattern says, so that's what I'm going to do. And of course, turn it under like we talked about. And I'm trying to get everything prepped so I can take it to work tomorrow and do the boning during like my lunch or something. So, I'm trying to just prep everything for boning. And then all I had to do is take it home and do the eyelets and um, binding at home. So that has that. Alright, so with the pieces sewn together, time to put the uh, bus in. So That's how I do busks. It's basically the same way I do um, eyelets. Little hand on ones, but that wasn't quite far enough over. The goal, of course, is not to break the fibers. What do I think I did a little bit on that one? So this is going to just fold it over and I can sew that in, um, at which point, yeah, I'm ready for boning on this side. So I'll be boning in all the channels and then um, one center back and then one here as well. I think I'm mostly going to use German plastic whalebone except for the center back, which is going to be steel. But yeah, we're on our way. Corsetry really is a lot easier than people think it is. It's really just the fitting issues. <laughs> Which we haven't even seen if this one fits yet. We're going to find out. Likely it'll be fine. Even if it's not perfect, it'll be fine for a couple times before I decide to upgrade. This is technically my mock-up. Mock -up, I just don't have time to make another one. So I can sew that down and put boning in after I get the other side ready. Sorry for the noise in the background. I'm having to make bread. So, <clears throat> got most of it boned. I have a few little bits of boning I need to put in. I think, oh yeah, they go here. So, boning in these corsets don't go all the way down and to keep them in place, we're gonna need to floss the corset which is basically do a little bit of embroidering just to keep the bones in place. I am using German plastic whalebone because it's my favorite boning ever and because I can't get real well grown. And I can, but it's hard to do so legally. Alright, and for flossing, I'm using just some cotton embroidery floss. Just two strands of it. 
And you can kind of see what I did on the, like the bottom. It is literally just there to hold the bones in place so they don't slide down on you. Okay, no, pin here. Let me take that out. Okay. So, like right here. And there's so many different ways to floss. This is just the way I chose. Basically make a little triangle with a satin stitch. And with me stitching through the layers like this, the bone can't go any lower than it's, it already is. I'm stitching in the ditch. don't often get to floss my courses because it's not terribly common in most of the time frame that I do, at least not for everyday corsets. Now it does seem when looking at originals that <clears throat> during this time period um, the most common colored corset seems to be like a flesh nude apricot color and they usually use like a white or a cream ivory embroidery, not like an, a contrast like this. Okay, so then I just do another one. Um, and what we need to do next is go ahead and put in the eyelets, at which point it's just boning, uh, not sorry, boning, binding, the other B word that we do with corsetry. Um, what I'm probably gonna try it on before I do that because I need to make sure I'm, I don't need to do anything else to it. Um, the only thing I could possibly see is if I need to take a tuck somewhere, which I'm happy to do, um, or possibly put in a hip gusset if I have to. All right. So I feel like I've been doing a lot um, without filming, but that's because I've been in and out of town and trying to work on it in between that, but I haven't really gotten a lot done. So we boned it, um, flossed it, as we discussed, binding it was the next step, and that shouldn't have taken very long, but it seemed like it took a while. So um, using the sewing machine on the inside part, I'm just kind of uh, doing, the, doing this on the back side, whip stitching, that's the word. Then on the top, I added some lace and ribbon uh, to match the, or not lace and ribbon, lace and edging to match the combinations and chemise we made last month. So that has been added. I'm gonna add some ribbon to it as well. I just haven't gotten to that point yet because I don't have the ribbon in yet. I should be getting that tomorrow. So I'll be working on that. That shouldn't take but, you know, five minutes to add in. But I am going to need to, in just a second, finish putting in the lace. Actually, not even lace. It, it, it is lace. It's lace beading, which, yes, is lace. But it's not what you think of when you think of lace, because we think of lace edging when we think of lace. This is still lace. It's lace beading. My edging is white work, not lace. So that is bound, top here. So there's like my beading and there's the lace edging. And I did that by machine. Actually, I used my little, well, my friend's uh, little chain stitch machine because it could go through the, through the boning pretty easily, whereas my modern machine, the thread kept breaking. But because the um, chain stitch is a hand crank, I could really get a feel for it and it worked really well. So I did that part by machine. This top part I found easier just to whip it in by hand. Because we're gonna put the lace in there so obviously if I didn't sew this down, the lace wouldn't have anywhere to go. So I'm just kind of whipping this together, making sure that my ribbon, whenever I put the ribbon in, will stay. Next up we're gonna lace it and then I'll be done until I get my ribbon tomorrow. And the ribbon isn't even really necessary. Like I can definitely wear it without the ribbon. But it'll make it look pretty. And why go to all the trouble making all these underpinnings if we're not gonna make them pretty? Pretty underpinnings for the win. All right, so that is done. Now I have two halves and lots and lots of eyelets. I don't even know where to start with this. 
how do you guesstimate how many yards you need for this? Um, if I want maybe a, how much is that? Five inch hip spring, which, um, just for looseness, I think. Six inches, and that's loose. To go across a six, but then every one of these is going to be doubled. One, two, three. Maybe 20, 20, that's 20 feet, which is about seven yards. But I also want some loops in the back. So eight yards, nine yards, let's go with 10 yards and call it a day. That sounds like a plan to me. Luckily I have a yard long board, so I can just go 10. One, two, three, four, Six, seven, ten-ish. Oh, cool. Let's hope this is enough. Let that stay. And we're basically going to do a bunny ear style, um, the looped lacing, which is what I usually do. So this one came out off the top of this one, so it's going to go down on the top of this one, come out on the bottom. And you can go skip one and go this way. So that came up on the top, so it needs to go down on this side from the bottom. So that came from the bottom, it needs to go on the bottom this way. Yeah, we're just going to keep going with that. So my waist is here-ish. I need to stop at that point and do the looped bits. I don't think there's going to be enough lacing. And to do the bunny ears, we put it down on this one. Now we catch up with this side. I'm hoping my math and as far as how long to like make these laces was right. It's late. I haven't had a lot of sleep this week. I'm hoping that doesn't come back to bite me. I don't think it will. It looks like it's going to be okay, maybe. We're going to go down on this side to make my little loops. Now that went down on the bottom, so this needs to go up to the top. And that's essentially the lacing. So in theory, that should be nice and laced now. I just gotta wait for the ribbon and we'll be done. All right, I got more ribbon in. So I'm over here working ribbon through the lace, which is a little bit more difficult than on the other pieces simply because I think the thickness of the drill is just, I'm having a hard time bending it enough to get the needle through. So it's going a little slower than I'd like, but I'm just about done. There we go. And on this end, I'm just gonna fold that under. There we go, all right. And I'm gonna stitch on the machine, just on that very edge, kind of like I did right here, just to keep this um, in place. But that is the corset. I guess it's time to try it on. All right. So, here we go. Nice large corset. And I thought the uh, 1830s ones were long. This, this takes the cake. And I do have garters at the bottom of it now. I don't have stockings on today, so they're not gonna attach to anything, but they are there. And they actually hold stockings. I kept looking at them going, there's no way this is going to hold anything. This is not going to work. And I was very surprised all day long. I think I only had one pop off. Um, so it actually wasn't that bad. Of course, it happened to be a back one, which means I had to get my fiance like up there to, you know, fix it for me because I can't reach back there. Let's do this for this one first. almost meets in the back like it's just just shy 
of being too big. It's not quite too big, but it's just shy of being that way. It's a little closer to meeting than I would prefer it to be. I can't tell if that's even all the way down or not, but it feels good. When I was wearing it the other weekend, it, it did like equal amounts all the way down, so it fits really well. It's just very strange. It's just a little, a little lower than I prefer. I'm gonna pull the shimmy down just a little bit. Now we're gonna tie this. That is the corset. I mean, I thought I'd have an issue with, you know, like sitting down or because it's so long. I had no issues the whole weekend. The only thing is going to the restroom was a little bit challenging because so much fabric is just like bulked up down here. It was a little bit of a struggle and I definitely need more practice um, to get that right. But um, overall, it was easier than I expected it to be. Let's put it that way. Easier than I expected. It is quite a lovely little corset. It's one of those corsets you really don't feel like you have on, um, which is strange because it is so long. It almost goes down as far as my hands go down. These are a little strange. They are not my favorite. They um, they work. They definitely pull up stockings, and they don't slip again as often as I thought they would. But um, it is very strange as you walk to feel them like pull a little bit. It's a very odd feeling, especially as I'm not accustomed to that whatsoever. I don't have garters that attach my corsets. I have garters that tie around my knee. Like, this is very weird to me. It's a very strange, it's a strange contraption. Um, I understand why they do it and it makes sense and it works. It just is a very, again, a very weird feeling. Because every time I move my legs, I could feel them like pulling up my stockings, and I'm just, it's very, it just, it was just weird. But I'll get used to it as I wear it more. Let's just put it that way. But yeah, I mean, not much to say about it. It's a beautiful little corset. Um, I'm actually surprised it still looks as clean as it does, because uh, it's white. Um, I don't usually wear white corsets. I mean, that was the most popular color throughout most of history, but I don't have a lot of white corsets. Most of my, like, my 1860s one is blue. Uh, I think I have one 1830s one that's white, and my half stays are white, but the rest of them are colored like blue and um, kind of a natural linen color, and I have a pink one. And so I'm actually surprised it actually still has pretty nice for me being outside all day long, but again, it is under a lot of layers, so that is just why not. Other than that, I mean, it's easy to sit down in, it's easy to move in, I didn't ever feel restricted, I couldn't, like I can move all the ways I'm accustomed to moving, so overall it was a really good experience, and um, I don't expect to do 19 teens, maybe, but, I don't expect to do 19 teens, but maybe once, maybe twice a year, so I mean, I'm not going to get a lot of use out of this if I'm not making a whole lot of clothes. I'm going to have one set of underpinnings. I might make one civilian dress, and um, maybe that's it. I might end up making an actual nurse's uniform because I got called a nurse all weekend long. All weekend. And I kept having to say, well, actually, I'm not a nurse. I'm a canteen worker. And it, yes, I, got, I had to correct people a lot. I mean, you have a little cap on, and of course, it looks, you look like a nurse. So, I mean, it is what it is. And it did get a lot of conversation started. It was all day long. I'm not a nurse. So, that was, that was interesting. I would like a civilian dress, and I might actually end up doing a nursing in person, just because, you know, everyone already thinks I'm a nurse, I might as well go ahead and go for that. But, yeah, I was in and out of Model T, um, vehicles, one was ambulance, one was just a truck. I was walking, running, um, did a little scenario where they actually made me be a nurse. I told them I wasn't a nurse, but they still sent me out in the field and I had to go like care for some people and I was able to bend down, like kneel, do all the things. So perfectly, perfectly um, serviceable corset. 
Um, but the way this is sitting, I probably could tie up these a little bit. But I think I'm going to leave them for right now. But that's about it. I mean, it's a it's a corset. We've made lots of corsets on this channel. Probably would make many more. Uh, this is probably the only 19 teens corset, simply because I don't do a lot of those, and I only need one corset for that. So. With all that being said, thank you so much for joining me today as we made our 19 teens corset. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe to the channel. And as always, have a fantastic week, and I'll see you back here on Monday.